Hello and welcome to our today's topic, pressure measurement. Pressure measurement. We want to measure the pressure. First of all, what is pressure? Yeah, it's not that easy. I mean, yeah, uh, we are talking about, uh, of course, about the mechanical, the physical pressure, so force per square meter. But also here we do have two different things. If we look at the pressure, yeah, if we look at the pressure, we have some certain pressure which is currently surrounding us. Ambience pressure, pressure in the air. Yeah. Of course, this is sometimes a little bit higher, sometimes a little bit lower. We are around one thousand thirteen millibars. Yeah. This is the ambience pressure. If we do say we measure the pressure, then this is usually, usually we mean the pressure uh, excesses. Yeah? So this means overpressure or something like this. So if we have here a certain pressure, yeah, then we can distinguish between this PE extensive excessive pressure additional to the ambience pressure or we can measure the absolute pressure yeah? these two things we have to distinguish yeah? absolute pressure is always always bigger than zero yeah? and the Excessive pressure may be lower because if we have, for instance, a pressure here, this is easily possible, for instance, in a suction tube or something like this, then this PE is smaller than zero. Yeah? Excessive pressure is smaller than zero, here we have it bigger than zero. And the absolute pressure is bigger than zero, and here also bigger than zero. It's always bigger than zero, the absolute pressure. When we're talking about pressure, we need to know which one we are measuring. Yeah? There are pressure measurement devices which do measure the excessive pressure, but there are also devices, these are a lot, yeah? but there are also devices which do measure the absolute pressure. One rather easy one rather easy method of measuring pressure, for instance, if this is the wall of some tank where I want to measure the pressure, measure the pressure, I like this. Then I have some U-shaped tube here. Ooh. It's mounted here. Somehow, no pressure, then inside here the liquid would be leveled, okay? The same, the same level. Okay. If we do have here now additional pressure, then the liquid would have moved. This, okay? So I measure A height difference in the liquid. Why is that? Why is that? This is 
proportional to PE. Yeah. Why is that? Because because of the pressure here at this area I have some force from the pressure. There's an area, there's a pressure, pressure multiplied by area is the force. And here this amount, this amount of liquid does have a certain mass and this mass produces also a force and once those two forces are equal it will be stable. If this force is bigger then it will fill up here until there is more mass and re re resulting in more force and that's it. So this delta H, this delta, delta height is proportional to the pressure PE here. And here we are open, here we have the ambient pressure. So it's proportional to P. Maybe we can think of closing it up here. Yeah. Put vacuum in here so that the pressure is zero. Then this is proportional to the absolute pressure. Okay. Of course this is somehow depending on the density of the used liquid. To have, I mean, if we're using water for instance, we would have a and here we would have one bar excessive pressure, we would have around 10 meters height difference. That's pretty much, I would say. But however, we, can, we could use uh, mercury, for instance, then we have much less, much less. <laughs> then we would have really less uh, height difference because mercury is very heavy, yeah? but poisonous. That's maybe the disadvantage of this. Yeah? But this this is quite often used, yeah? especially for differential pressure measurements. Yeah? Differential pressure measurements do often have such U-shaped U glassura, where we have on one side, we have P excessive 1, on the other side we have P excessive 2, and then we see the levels inside, in this case, which pressure is bigger? P2, of course. And then we have here this height difference. This is often a use case to indicate if two pressures are equal or not. Let's come to real measurement devices, which are common, commonly used. Yeah? There are, of course, spring devices. I have explained this already, but this time, this time, I hope I can, I can find a better drawing. Uh, this time, I hope I can make a better drawing. Uh, let's see. There's one type. This is a tube spring looking like this. There's the tube spring, and we have here the process connector. Yeah. Inside there is the pressure, inside there's the pressure. Yeah. Here we do have these connectors, usually something like this. And then here we do have the casing. Again, a little bit not that good. Then, we, of course, we have some sort of pointer somewhere. Yeah. And then I said, okay, we have here. We have here some sort of rod, some sort of of gears, and these gears will then manipulate the pointer. Okay. Tube spring measurement device. Okay. 
So this is a tube spring. Very accurate, yeah, very sensitive. In both ways, yeah, very sensitive, yeah, that we can measure slight pressure differences. Yeah. However, very sensitive if we apply over pressure because of course this needs to be inside the hooks straight, so this needs to be reversed the, the movement of the spring. Yeah. And there is no mechanical part limiting this. If I apply too much pressure, this will be permanently bent, and then that's it for this device. Sensitive device. Sensitive device. But for sure possible. Yeah? Commonly used. Other device. There is the spring, which looks like this. On the side we have some Mm -hmm. This is how it looks like. Then the casing looks on the upper side looks like this. And the lower side looks like this. Here again we have the process connector. This looks pretty much the same. the thread. Please excuse my wild drawings here. Huh? Here we usually clamp it. Yeah. Looks like this. It is clamped here. There are some screws usually around this. Some bolts and screws to hold this thing together. This spring. Yeah. If we apply here pressure. If we apply here pressure. This plate spring, this is a plate spring, because it's formed like a plate. Plattenfeder, yeah? plattenfeder or feeder, plate spring. This is moving up and down according to the pressure. If, it's, if there's no pressure, it will lie on the bottom side. If there's high pressure, it will be on the top side. And you see there's a mechanical uh, rest. So this is not that sensitive anymore. Okay. The top part pretty much looks the same. There is the head. Yeah. There is then somehow something which is over our gears manipulating again the pointer. Okay. The pointing device. Plate spring, plate spring, tube spring. Two devices. Not that sensitive in terms of destruction. Simply two different things. What is common in both? Here we just indicate what is common in both if you want to, to not only indicate it on a pointer, if he wants to somehow measure it and transfer it as electrical signal, you need to measure distance here. There are several possibilities of how to measure. One possibility is to apply to apply here force and stress measurement. Yeah? To apply here force and stress measurement. So a strain gauge, yeah? resistance strain gauge, like we discussed in the in the recording video. Yeah? So we measure the force on the springs and then we calculate out of the force to the tension on the springs and out of the tension we can calculate the we can calculate to the to the pressure applied. Yeah? Very accurate. Very yeah. So I will write it, write it down here. Measurement with Dehnmesstreifen (DMS), or in English, this would then be resistance strain gas. Uh, resistance strain gas. Dehnmesstreifen. Yeah. Accurate.
very accurate. Yeah. High range, high range. Uh, pressure range can be from two, just the thickness of the of the of the string. Uh, very robust. It's actually it's also long term stability is uh, quite quite high. Yeah. However, in low pressure area, we do have not enough movement. This is then maybe. This is then not the field of this uh, of this measurement of this movement measurement device, yeah? and also it cannot be too too small applied too small. Yeah? So the, the the building size is the building size. That's it. It cannot be smaller. Yeah? If you want to miniaturize, it's not the the thing you want. Yeah? Also, this. These, these stripes they need to be glued on. The temperature stability of the glue and long term stability of the glue might not be that accurate. Yeah? There are all things which might measure, which might uh, have influence. Yeah? So we could measure this by applying here some stress cautious, residual stress cautious around the Mesh-Treffen method. Other method is that we apply here piezoelectric crystals, yeah, which will do the movement with the with the springs and piezoelectric crystals. We have talked about this. They are they will produce some some uh, charge. Charge. This is the word I'm looking for. They will produce some charge, and this charge can be measured. Yeah? And the big advantage of these piezoelectric things is these things are really, really, really fast. Yeah? It's not. I mean, the, these these ones are fast, and these are really fast. Okay. We can measure high, high. Uh, Dynamic pressure ranges, yeah. For instance, in an engine, yeah, motor, and combustion engine, yeah, very fast. Talk, talk to high pressure, low pressure, pressure peaks, and so on. This is this is the field of piezoelectric measurement devices. Okay. They also have good linearity and a great variance in temperature stability. Disadvantages that it tends to drift. It, so if you have static pressure, piezoelectric things are not that are not that accurate, not that working, yeah, because they tend to drift a little bit. Yeah. For dynamic pressure they are perfect, for static pressure they are not that perfect. And also you need to have special cables, you need to have special charge amplifiers and so on. Need to be a little bit more uh, around this piezoelectric measurement. Okay. Then we do have measurement according inductive. Inductive uh, move measurement. We have talked about inductive measurements. You know, there are. We have talked about different things we might use. Uh, they are very simple. They are very simple in in building. Uh, they are robust. They are they are not sensitive. They are they work pretty well. Okay. Moisture, no issue. Yeah. Temper high temperature, no issue. Yeah. Relatively high output signal. Yeah. So the the, the high amplification must not is not that necessary. Yeah. However, uh, the same issue like here, if you want to have it really small, this is not very good. This is good in having small, this is not that good in having small. And there is also might be a temperature, uh, there, need, there needs to be a temperature correction somehow. Yeah. 
One disadvantage is also that this is not suitable for direct current. Yeah? To measure inductive things, you need to have alternating current. Alternating current means you have you might have issues with the electromagnetic field around it. Yeah? In this case, it's not that sensitive. It's not that issue, not that big issue. But we can also measure capacity. Capacity measurement, that's the third one, yeah? third possible, to measure with a capacitor. Where, where, for instance, the plate, two plates of the capacitor, where the difference distance is moved yeah? by, by the movement of the, of the spring. Yeah? Or maybe they have the plates and the plates will grip into each other and the area of the plates, the covering area of the plates is changed. Both is possible. To measure capacity, because the capacity is really, really small usually, yeah, we need to have quite high, quite high frequency on our alternating current. Yeah? This is the big disadvantage of this one. Yeah? High frequency necessary, which means the electronics must be very close to the sensor somehow. Yeah? And also, since the capacity is really, really depending on the, on the electrolytic part between the plates, yeah, this is very dust and moisture uh, sensitive. If there is high moisture and maybe it's condensating, then suddenly the capacity is changing. Yeah. What's not too good, because I want to just measure the distance yeah, and not the change in humidity. Yeah. Also, miniaturizing is limited. Yeah. But they are, they are shared is with this. The only thing which is really miniaturized is this piezoelectric thing. Yeah. This, this is more dynamic than this one, because here lower masses are, here higher masses are involved, because I have to shift uh, a mass simply inside the coil. Yeah? Here we are a little bit more dynamic. So that's, that's actually pressure measurement, the principle of pressure measurement. Some spring which is deformed, either tube spring, plate spring, plate spring is overload, res more overload resistance than a tube spring, and the movement can be measured with stress gauge, piezoelectric, inductive or capacity the advantage and disadvantage I have mentioned. Okay, So, these are the common things. Let's have a look on some real pressure measurement device. This one here. Okay. This one here is already a little bit special because it's a differential pressure measurement device. Yeah. You see, we have here two, two connectors and then this thing here is measuring is measuring the difference pressure difference between connection one and connection two. This can be used, for instance, for flow measurement yeah, with this orifice, for instance. Yeah. So this is how it typically looks like. Yeah. There is some sensor head, yeah. like usually I would say. There is some sensor head. There is some measurement device, the sensor now. In the head there is the electronics. How they are solving it, I cannot exactly tell you. You can see there is the electronics inside. Yeah? And of course, this can also be opened. Whoa! Yeah, industry standard. Of course it needs to be. Close that. Yeah, prevent dust getting in. And here, here you can operate. Yeah? Menu, very comfortable thing. Yeah? Adjust what is 4 milliamps, how many pressure difference should be 4 milliamps, how many pressure difference should be 20 milliamps, yeah? and so on. In this case here, 
we do not have a connector so we have a cable cable a hole for a cable to fill in yeah so we have VG screw big Eva Schraubung and let's have a look also under under this hood here Uh -huh. instructions very useful that they are inside there and here we do have our connector you see 4 to 20 milliamps plus and minus and there is even a test uh -huh. good and this is ground very nice very nice measurement sensor Typical, typical pressure measurement device, industry grade. Close it. Close it again. From every, from every uh, manufacturer from measurement device you get different measurement devices and so on just look what you need according to specs okay so this one you see it's 4 to 20 milliamps hard signal the pressure is from minus 16 to 16 bars i also want to share with you the possibility of a so-called weight manometer how is a weight manometer working we do have a tube we do have a piston inside the tube okay. the area of the piston The area of the piston is very well defined. Very, very well defined. Uh, so here we do have a certain area. And here we do have our pressure P we want to measure. Our pressure is applying a force on the area. In order to compensate this force, here is a plate, here is a plate, and I can stack on weights here, yeah? simply have, like I do it in the fitness center, yeah? in the gym, stack a plate, not enough, still moving up, stack a second plate, yeah. Yeah. stack a smaller plate yeah. and then depending on which, depending on the size of the area, and depending on the weight of the plates, they are highly highly accurate, yeah. so these are always have a mess, very very accurate things. Yeah. You are only allowed to touch them with gloves and so on, so that you cannot ox uh, bring in too much fat or moisture to this, that they keep their, their weight and so on. needs to be handled with care, yeah? but then these things are very accurate. And then, this thing here needs to be spinned yeah? during measurement. The piston needs to be spin to a measurement, so just grab it here and spin it. Why is that? Because if it's not spin, then it might tilt a little bit, and then I have here friction, this area. This will add force, Yeah, I will measure two less pressure. Okay. So there is friction inside, to avoid this friction I have to spin this, this is then spinning, 
and applying all the weight directly to the liquid or to the to the material where the pressure is yeah? and because if there is the weight force yeah? and if the weight force and the force applied by the liquid are are equal yeah? then i can i know according the mass i put on the pressure yeah? this is often used to to calibrate uh, pressure measurement devices because then i put on exactly the weight for one bar for instance yeah spin it here is then the pressure measurement yeah I put on one part and I know exactly here in there are one bar I can measure and find out the error the error of this pressure measurement device yeah. piston piston pressure measurement yeah. this is mainly for this is mainly for uh, calibrating pressure measurement devices yeah. the oil inside here must also have a certain uh, viscosity and so on Ooh, there are a lot of influences like always if you look in the details it's getting more complicated but the principle I think is rather easy the principle is rather easy yeah but like I said these are mainly to calibrate set things huh? to know the error now let's talk a little bit on how to mount these pressure measurement devices okay because there are several errors which could be made yeah for instance if you have a tube here you want to measure the pressure inside the tube okay there inside there is some streaming liquid the liquid streams in this direction yeah? and I want to measure the, tube, the, the, the pressure okay. do not mount do not mount the pressure measurement device like this yeah? there might be condensate there might be a leakage here somewhere which is then constantly dripping over our measurement device that's not good yeah? always mount mount it like this with a little tube yeah then if there is a leakage somehow it's dripping down but not running across our our measurement device yeah? inside you have to take care how this is handled here if you maybe have a tube which is bent in this direction you measure too much pressure if you have a tube which is bent in this direction you measure too less pressure because you measure the dynamic pressure also yeah? this is used in airplanes to 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 measure the airspeed yeah stau druck over yeah? you have to take care you also have to take care in bands if there is a band if you measure on the outside you will measure more pressure throw it if there is a band in the tube yeah. if you measure on the outside if you measure on the outside here there is the pressure bigger and here on the inside is the pressure smaller simply because the mass is also there is dynamic pressure on the outside this is sometimes used to measure the flow through yeah, in big in big Kaplan turbines for instance winter Kennedy measurement yeah. you measure on the outside of the spiral case you measure on the inside of the spiral case out of the pressure measurement you know how much water is running through yeah. this needs to take care you also have to take care where your sensor is lying yeah. one, one possibility here is the measurement then you go up to the next floor yeah? so there is a difference of let's say three meters yeah? 
you measure here two less pressure because you have this pressure loss yeah because there is a liquid liquid filled part of the tube which also has some mass and which also applies force yeah? you have to take care this this height yeah that you have you have to know where to where to place the pressure measurement simply okay yeah these are all things which which you have to think about if you if you uh, plan how to measure pressure yeah? take care about the height take care about the position yeah don't also heat yeah? heat might be an issue if this is steam or whatever then heat might influence this a lot yeah then to have to take care that this is far away or as far as necessary away from from the steam and so on yeah you have to take care about the dimensions of the pressure measurement lines they need to be rather small to to have high high dynamic range yeah if you have that big pressure measurement lines from the main line to your pressure gauge the dynamic is not that good anymore if you have very thin tubes it's better because then there is only i don't know a milliliter not even a milliliter tiny tiny a microliter which needs to be filled in and the pressure is rising if i have a lot of place here yeah then i need to fill in more and the dynamic is better with smaller tubes yeah. these are things you need to to think about if you're planning a pressure measurement let's have a look on real pressure measurements here i think you know this i've you've, you've seen this before yeah on several occasions this this uh tank here you can see three different pressure me measurements actually this is a pressure switch this is a local indication yeah? and these are electronic devices yeah? and you can see the pressure lines are always always coming from the bottom yeah? always coming from the bottom to avoid tripping okay always coming from the bottom and it's located somewhere else so if we measure here the pressure yeah, then we need to also take into account the height difference here okay. let's have a look on another installation here this is a cooling water supply in this case it's a cooling water supply and we measure the pressure of the cooling water supply you see it's bent upwards so that it condensates in the other direction yeah? and there is the pressure measurement device above here yeah? also the pressure switch here is coming from somewhere but always from below always from below yeah? here there's even even uh, for maintenance reason there is a hand valve which can be closed and then the pressure measurement device can be exchanged easily this is actually how it should look like okay then here we also got two examples also from below also with the hand valves yeah? there are even two built in yeah they usually show the same pressure one is showing the gas pressure that's actually actually that's the gas tank of this hydraulic tank before that's a it's a, a hydraulic uh, accumulator piston accumulator in this case with here is the nitrogen gas tanks and here is the oil reservoir one is measuring the pressure of the nitrogen and one is measuring the pressure of the oil reservoir yeah these are these two these two gauges but always from the bottom okay. at least that's it what i'm going to tell you about pressure measurement
So thank you for your attention and goodbye.